Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and this is going to be the first video in a series of videos where we're going to discuss communications plan and communications planning. The communications plan that you put together is as important, if not more important, than the equipment and resources that you bring to bear to facilitate communication. The model we're going to use for our communications plan in this instance is going to be one that's applicable to families or to other groups of individuals and it's completely scalable. It can be as small or as large as you want it. So let's get started. Right off the bat we're going to go over the what, the why, the who, and the when of the radio communications plan. Uh, what is a radio communications plan? It's a system to utilize radio communication resources effectively and it's a dynamic plan. It's living, breathing, like an organism. And it starts with the basic requirements and then grows with needs. As your needs change, so should your communications plan to support those needs. It can adapt with changes. If you have a problem with uh, some equipment and you need to go ahead and adapt to that and roll with it. And then you would interact with others, which is other people who may not be part of your own team or organization. And you should be able to interoperate with those. And your communications plan should take this into consideration. Keep it simple. And you're going to see this throughout this entire series. Your plan needs to be able to be understood by everyone and not by just radio savvy people. Your plan needs to be able to be understood by everyone that's operating within the plan and you need to be able to explain that to them and do yourself a favor and spare them the details because that just can create further confusion. Be realistic in estimating your plan's capability. Uh, it's better to underestimate than overestimate. If you're tasked with a specific function of the communications plan to support uh, something further away than you know that your equipment is capable of supporting, you need to speak up and you need to let them know ahead of time that, look, in order to support what your desired operation is, these are the kind of changes we're going to have to implement and this is how much time it's going to take. And minimize your RF footprint. Uh, if you are operating within the confines of a 500 acre piece of property, there's no reason to set up field deployable adjuncts or anything that is just going to increase your radio signals footprint. And this isn't just for OPSEC reasons. This is also if you're in an area where frequency resources are minimized and you have to coordinate with other people using, using the same frequencies in the area, it's up to you to minimize your coverage contour just to support your operation. We'll discuss the why. Why do we have a radio communications plan? Two important reasons, information and coordination. Information is the gathering and relaying of information. Now, in information gathering and relaying, there's, there's actually two separate tracks. One that's part of the communications plan and one that's outside the communications plan. The outside of the communications plan aspect is more of an intelligence gathering, whether through uh, media or through uh, monitoring. Uh, radio communications resources, internet, or whatever. That is a whole separate track that's distinct and separate from the communications plan that we're discussing. The communications plan, when we talk about information, we're talking about information germane to the operation in question that the plan is supporting. And the second part of this is coordination, which is just simply to enhance the efficiency and safety of the supported operation. If you have a plan and you know how how person A is going to talk to person B and whatever talk path they're on and with a knowledge in advance of just what kind of performance parameters can be expected, you're well ahead of the game. Who's responsible for managing the plan? Well, it could just be you. It could be if you're you know, four people, I mean, hey, you're going to be the guy that's going to be responsible for radio. And if that's the case, uh, the prerequisites for someone that's in charge of this would be someone who has the knowledge. They have the skill and the ability to develop and implement the plan and to uh, technically support the plan. And they should have an interest in doing it. This shouldn't be something that you uh, pass off to someone who's disinterested in 
the communications discipline in general and they're just using it as a stepping stone for the simple reason that it, you, it takes someone who actually has an active interest in it to succeed and preferably someone that has an operations background someone who actually understands the operation they're supporting and the intricacies of that and can actually adapt the plan to support said operation now when you're talking about organizations that are larger you would probably have someone as a communications unit leader or a com l and that's someone that would have a subordinate technician or technicians depending upon the size of the organization and then for your smaller organizations you may have an individual that's your communication specialist or com spec who acts as the communications leader and a communications technician all rolled into one when would you use your radio communications plan essentially whenever you use your radio you're using a radio communications plan whether that be cellular or two-way radio and the most basic communications plan is you have a tactical talk path which is radio to radio simplex a wide area talk path which is repeated or duplex and a calling which is how people from outside of your radio net can contact you and that could be repeated or radio to radio now what you can see is is that if you're just using your cell phone when you leave the house you've basically got a calling talk path and a wide area talk path and you could also use it as a tactical but it's only a single a single user to a single user rather than talking to a group what you'll find is is that those three basic building blocks will establish your foundation of your communications plan in the next part we're going to talk about pooling your resources for developing your communications plan and coming up with a resource pool to pull from. Well, I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comps. Till next time.